Okay, fab. Well, firstly, thank you for having me here to chat with you um, this morning. Um, it's great to see so many of you in the classroom. A bit strange because I've not left my house in a very long time to go to work. Um, but yeah, so I'm um, Fran. I am currently Nature Conservation Manager for Habitats and Heritage. Until a few weeks ago, we were Environment Trust, um, but we've gone through a merger with another charity um, and now have a new name, but I'll, I'll cover that later on. So if, if Danny, you could move on. Um, so I thought I would just chat to you about some of my sort of relevant work experience moving through to sort of get where I've I've got really. Um, it's not necessarily a most straightforward route. It, I've been around the houses a little bit, but uh, um, one of the first uh, things that I did relevant was um, actually during my time at university. Um, I should probably say I studied um, marine biology down in Plymouth um, Uni. Um, when I was down there, I also did um, I took up a volunteering role working with the RSPB, um, and actually that wasn't directly related with marine. It was more about public engagement and um, getting primary school students and really focusing on those sort of the inner city ones, the, the schools with a, a lot of concrete and, and not much nature, and really engaging the students in nature, taking them on bug hunts, talking to them about um, the different things that they can see. We did, we did some marine sessions and things like that, but it was all about engagement and making um, nature accessible to those type of students, which um, I found really, really um, powerful and actually has really greatly benefited me moving forward, being able to actually speak to not just adults and not just scientists about um, the marine sector and the environmental sector as a whole, but um, also to be able to speak to um, children and as young as I think the youngest group were the reception age and knowing how to sort of change how you speak, depending on whether you're speaking to receptionists, uh, um, re reception age students, or you're talking to year six or, or students like yourselves, um, or you're talking in a professional um, setting. It's, it was really great experience to, to hone those skills and by volunteering, it sort of it gets you that foot in the door to, to organisations such as RSPB, which I found were, were really useful um, referees and um, my sort of the people I worked for there were really supportive in, in what steps to take next as, as part of a career. Um, if you can move on to the next slide, Danny. Thank you. Um, also, during my time um, at uni, I um, did the HSC Pro Scuba Part 4, I believe, while I was at uni, um, and that is a commercial diving licence, and um, Plymouth is one of the unis that actually offers that during a summer, so I spent an intensive month um, in August diving all over the Sound, learning um, how to dive commercially, and it's anyone that's, that's dived before, it's very, very different to um, paddy diving or, or recreational diving it's a lot more it's sort of that one step further from tech diving if anyone's done any tech diving so we did things like through water comms and um, being on lifeline diving and also if you ever dive with a buddy you're actually physically attached to them um, it's kind of like towing a caravan with you um, which is is lots of fun but that opened some fantastic um, opportunities to work with so I did this at the end of my first year. So all throughout my second year um, and onwards, I was able to do a lot of project diving. So diving for people doing their um, dissertations for their final year, but also work for uh, doctoral students and also the lecturers as well, collecting different um, samples. Also worked on the seagrass project that it, it, I believe is still going now. And I believe actually Meg might have mentioned in, in a previous uh, talk. So I'd sort of dived with that in the early stages of that uh, back in 2018. Um, so it really opened some doors. So that was a really fantastic thing that I was, I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to do. Um, or sort of developing different angles of attack to, to break into the industry really. Uh, if you could move on to the next slide. Yep, I was also um, fortunate enough to do an internship, um, a placement year um, in my third year of uni. So I took sort of a, a gap year from uni and went off um, and lived in Florida for a year. And I worked for six months in Whitney Laboratory of Marine Bioscience. They are a marine biology um, lab 
linked with University of Florida based on the coast. So if you can see in the picture here, in this really hideous place, um, right on the coast, um, just below Jacksonville. Um, so we had pretty much every possible uh, environment within an hour's drive of us. So I got to do lots and lots of field work. Um, I actually collected my data for my dissertation, which is the, the lovely poster with, with lots of graphs and things there. Um, and worked in salt marshes, worked in the open ocean, worked in the intercoastal, uh, managed to get down to Big Cypress National Park and the Everglades, and also working in freshwater springs and um, working with an organisation called Sea Grant, um, analysing uh, plastics in water columns and pretty much everything in between. And uh, the actual lab I was based in was a bio geo um, chemistry marine lab um but from there i branched out and worked with a lot of the the, the different labs looking at all different um both practical and lab-based skills so um if, if you are thinking of going to university and and things like that and you have the option to take a placement year i would i couldn't recommend it more it taught me more in those six months in terms of practical skills than any sort of class or lab field ever gets to do because you just have that time you have that time to fully immerse in the in the um industry and then see what different options are out there and I was I was very fortunate to work in lots of different labs and also do lots of different field work so to really get a grip to what I I really loved about the industry and, um, and where I wanted to go um if you could move on to the the next slide my second six months out there, I worked in the adjoining Turtle Hospital. Um, so the Turtle Hospital Whitney Lab is um, an FP specialist, fibropapillomitosis, which is this, this growth you see on this turtle here. So it's basically, it's a herpes virus for turtles. And you get these cauliflower growths on them. And it's really, really understudied. So no one's really sure the causes. It, it's, it's, a bit more studied now, thanks to some of the work at the lab and, and further afield, and it really impacts the juvenile green sea turtles. Um, so we were working at both treating, rehabilitating, but also um, studying and, and, and working out causes and whether there was links to nitrogen runoff or, or what other things they were. So it was really great to get first hand hands on experience within the turtle hospital. Um, and yeah, everything from daily feeds, tank cleanings, releases, operations, scans and and everything in between. So I sort of um, it wasn't sort of six months at one site and six months the other. It was actually all sort of jumbled in together because they were all at the, the same um, location. So this was, again, at the same location, but it was really great experience. And as also part of that, I did a lot of um, outreach. So talking with local people there about um sea turtles but also uh, marine conservation in general um, and it was really great to uh, expand the experience I had as a volunteer um, further and be able to talk to people about um, marine conservation have this great facility to really demonstrate the benefits of, of what marine conservation can do um, and that sort of further developed my love of, of outreach and, and engagement there. Um, so that's that. And then I went back to university, finished off my final year, did my dissertation and et cetera, et cetera. And then my first role out of uni, um, if you can move on to the next slide, Danny, please. Thank you. Um, was actually, I moved a bit more inland. Um, I had to move home. I didn't have any money. So I uh, had to move home and my parents are based in Ascot in Berkshire and there is a science and nature centre um, near them. So I, I got a role as the um, duty manager and education coordinator for that, looking at all things nature and also science. I had to brush up on um, astronomy and things like that to be able to teach to schools. Uh, but my real uh, development was in their, their nature side of things, getting it, it's in a fantastic forest. Um, so developing different activity workshops, um, things that schools can do, things that families can do. Um, it's a hands on centre so people come in and, and really engage directly with with nature and science. And that was a really fantastic role. One to develop um, managerial experience. I hadn't ever really managed staff before. Um, so managing to get that experience in actually the people and the, the sort of business side of things, um, as well as developing further that outreach work. Um, I was only there for a short period of time. I was only a maternity cover, so I was just out there for under a year. 
And then I was fortunate enough to, Dan, if you could move on to the next slide, please. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a role with an NGO in Madagascar, Nosy B. So this is just where it is. So it's a small island off of the north coast of Madagascar. Obviously, Madagascar is an African island in the Indian Ocean. Um, and I lived in a very small wooden hut with no electricity, um, limited running water, a long drop for a toilet um, and very, very basic living um, in the Lakobi Reserve right down on the edge here in the bottom um, picture there, right down on the coast overlooking the sea. So it was a beautiful spot, quite basic. And I, I lived there for um, a good period of time. And if you could move on to the, the next slide. Um, so there I was, um, I ended up running the marine, um, pro oh, sorry, the, the marine programme, and that was um, fantastic. So that was taking volunteers from all over the world. Um, they came out and um, they came out to either just experience Madagascar and see the incredible wildlife there and engage a bit, or some of them came out to do internships and placement years and everything in between. And uh, the marine project was doing coral reef um, studies, um, so mapping um, along transex through diving. So I was le leading um, a scuba dive um, research project every day, going out and mapping four sites across the um, archipelago that we were living in um, and doing things like beach cleans, working with the local villages to, um, we, we created um, sort of fish aggregating devices from uh, mangrove trees and, and, and place them in to encourage sort of a fish nursery area. So their practices out there were already quite sustainable in this area. They went out on a wooden canoe to catch their fish and things like that, but they were all fishing in the same location and things like that. So we worked with them to work out how they could help their fish stocks and how they could better improve all of their practices. So we created fish aggregation devices to give a, a nursery area just to, to support the stocks that they were living off. Um, we also worked with them to create uh, rubbish bins or, or trash cans to um, actually put their litter in because they just they, they didn't. They just sort of dropped it on the floor and didn't have the knowledge that um, the impact that this was having. So we did a lot of work with them to to teach them about what they can do with their rubbish and all of the different um projects that they can do and actually um, a project called Eco Bricks formed from it where they were actually actively collecting rubbish um, and we worked with the local schools to both teach English but also to work on um, teaching them about their environment and all of the incredible things that were around there. Um, it was also worked on a to turtle identification project to sort of map the um, species or the individuals that they had around there coral reefs there so this is this funny picture of the turtle with lots of circles so there is a program that you can actually use to um, map a turtle's individual identity through photographic id just in the same way that you would with, with dolphins with their fins you can do that but with the side of the face um, of a turtle in a very similar way that you do with whale sharks and while i was out there i was quite fortunate to see incredible wildlife from lemurs to manta rays to whale sharks and my favorite nudibranch um there um it was just an, an incredible experience and i would have stayed out there longer had visas and pandemics and all sorts not hit um so then i was i was fortunate enough that during my time traveling so it took about four or five days to get back from this remote island i actually applied for a job in London in while I was in Ethiopia airport and was fortunate enough to um, get that job which if you move on to the next slide Danny and um, that's actually the role I'm in now so as I said at the beginning I did work for Environment Trust up until very recently um, Environment Trust merged with a, another charity um, and because of that we had to change our name so we are now Habitats and Heritage I am the Nature Conservation Manager for um, Habitats and Heritage. We are a charity based in southwest London. And my job is to sort of put it in a nutshell. I cover every natural project um, within southwest London and, and try to um, bring groups together to improve different um, environments right across. So that's everything from green spaces outside people's homes to the River Thames. And I do work such as um, 
restoration of, of, of riverbanks, as you can see some of them here, working with volunteers, um, doing litter picks, tree planting and everything in between. So I oversee um, the nature department and we um, look to work with communities and empower communities and work with local authority and uh, Greater London Authority to create projects. And those projects benefit the community, but also benefit biodiversity and uh, the habitats that we have around South and West London. Um, my role includes everything from project development, um, funding applications, um, monitoring volunteers and staff, um, actually getting out sometimes to deliver hands on the ground um, and working with lots of different stakeholders and partners um, right across South and West London. Um, so it's really, really varied. Um, I've been behind the desk for the last year a lot more than I would have liked to be, um, but I do get to go out and um, get my hands dirty a bit more now things are starting to open up which is great and yes we as i say we do everything between um improving nature reserves and working to improve the river thames by naturalizing banks putting in burns um large scale projects but also um community level um and led projects as well about biodiversity hotspots and a great project we're working on at the moment is called the green and blue hubs project and that is all about using small spaces of both um, the River Thames, but also um, green spaces to um, create biodiversity hotspots, but also stepping stone effects to join all of these places together for nature. Now, as you can tell, I've, I've moved a little bit out of the marine sector now. I still do quite a bit of river work, but it is um, most of my job is focused on outreach and engagement, which is really what I found my, my passion to be. And um, I have had to move a little bit inland um, just because of certain circumstances. But um, it, I feel sort of all the skills that I've developed from all of this time has actually transferred really, really well into both terrestrial but also my still have my, my love of marine conservation in there and and still get um to work with with river thames both the tidal and and the non-tidal um so yeah that's sort of uh, a whistle stop tour through the past five six years maybe a bit more um thank you for listening to me gabble on about me and uh happy for you guys to ask any questions and i'll, I'll try my best to answer them thank you francesca is anybody Wait, we do have a question coming. Okay, fab. Are you being sarcastic at your attention? Oh, uh, how do you mean? Um, but there's the site itself. Yeah, we heard um, Francesca say. I was working at it was hideous place. Oh, I was going to and it worked on me. I, I don't know if we heard it right, but um, apparently when you was working at the Bioscience Centre, you said it was a hideous place. I think the one based in America. Um, was there any reason behind that? Yeah. Oh, that, that was, that was um, a joke. There was a picture of it there, and it was it was right on the um, the waterfront, and it, it was the most picturesque place. Um, <laughs> there was a picture there, so yeah, you could you could probably see it. It wasn't hideous. It was. No. <laughs> it worked really well. It was beautiful. Yeah, it, it did. It did grab the attention. Why do you call it? Why do you call it hideous? And it's absolutely <laughs> the dream place to work. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I can't complain there. Um, I did have to live in a trailer because it was the, the cheapest accommodation, and and a hurricane season in a trailer was a uh, an experience. But uh, um, yeah, no, it was it was a beautiful place. Oh, thank you so much. Is there any other questions for anybody? Oh, yes, we have another one. Okay. Yeah. No, go for it. Francesca, have you ever heard of or worked with the Evolution Project in South East London? Sorry, I can't quite hear that. I just have to yeah. translate. What, what Young project? Lewisham Project. Sorry? Young Lewisham Project. Have you done any work in South London with Young Lewisham Project? I haven't. No, I haven't heard of of, of Young Lewisham Project. What, what type of work do they do? Um, young people um, we use a carrot or motorbike building and riding, but we would really like to do some sort of partnership project if possible. Um, <laughs> you want to come here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about yes. Um, 
We have contacts for Francesca. Yes, um, there's um, a, a lady here who would like to do some networking with you. Okay. So um, if I could pass your details on. Yes, that's great. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, Lee, did you have a question on the, in the chat? Yeah, I've seen that. So uh, top tips. Yeah. Uh, I would say um, definitely do as much voluntary work as you can. Um, my early work and sort of the placement I went on as well as voluntary work really opened doors. Um, and also don't be afraid to, if you feel like you're sort of going away from where you might want to be, but it's great experience, go for it. Because I, I felt like that when I was uh, taking my first job from uni. But actually, I don't think I would have got half my jobs that I've got if I hadn't managed to build that that um managerial experience and, and be able to move forward um so it doesn't always have to be really linear in terms of where you're going um so if, if you feel you're getting something from the role or even if it if it's not paid if it's volunteer or if it is an actual role go for it um it's, it's, as long as you feel you're you're learning something from it and you're, and you're growing um it doesn't always have to be a perfect a uh, straight line because I'm pretty sure most people in this industry have had some roundabout ways of, of getting to where they are because it, it is so competitive so anything that you can bolster and and also when you are in a role look for any CPD so um development um options that, that you can do to, to really bolster those things so things like GIS is a fantastic skill if you can if you can wrap your head around it and also statistics if you're good at statistics everyone wants to have you on their team because no one likes statistics i hate statistics we have someone great at statistics on our team i turn to them all the time i try my best with it but yeah so those those type of things that are probably your your, your lecturers or, or your teachers are telling you about it sounds mundane and it sounds boring but actually gas stats all those things it, it isn't just the exciting field work that you get to do and, and things like that the other things are are really important as well because that that's what makes you employable and um, having all of those sort of both breadth and depth of skills um, and as much experience as possible because more and more people are are getting degrees so those those extra bits that you can get on top and things like that um, and also charities are crying out for volunteers and people to work with them so yes you're getting something from them as well but you're also giving back to to charities and people like that especially um so we're we're a, a relatively small charity so people like that if you get you get to do lots of different things that you might do in sort of the big charities so i've obviously i've worked with rspb and that was fantastic at, at opening doors but um also small charities you get to do a little bit of everything because they are so interconnected within each department which is why i get to see projects from one point all the way through to, to completion uh, top personal skills that you are looking for recruiting being able to talk is a really good thing being able to to chat and, and hold a conversation and, and and sort of have that visible passion and engagement for, for what you're doing and being able to put that across um if i interview someone and they they seem a bit bored or they don't seem to care and I interview someone who is really passionate and and can give that to me in, in what they do and, and, and what they say that that's really important. So being able to share your passion verbally is a really great skill to develop. Stunned in silence. <laughs> Sorry, I have you muted. I've just asked. Um, no, I think you've answered <laughs> everything there. there. But um, that's really great. Can we give Francis a chance to everybody? Thank you very much, guys, for uh, listening to me rabbit on. And uh, yeah, you, you do have my email, so feel free to reach out with any further questions or or anything else that, that I can help you with. Um, and I, I hear you're doing a exam, so good luck for all your exams. Um, I hope they all go well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye.